33. I know, it seems bad. I'm just going to flash the loo and show you something. Push the button. So, you just flash the loo and find that it's not stopping. Like this one. Just continually running. Now then, taking the lid off my particular system, as you can see mine's a boxed in one. Now, it has actually got a valve, a little valve on this flexi, but it's down below there. And I've got to either cut a hole inside of this box cabinet or put one somewhere else. Now, the reason I want to do that is because if you look at this, you'll see that I like the water level to be as high as I can possibly get it. So that when it flushes, it flushes the whole lot. I don't like it when you only get half a flush. I never use that mechanism anyway, uh, and I like it to flush as much as I can. So therefore, because I've got the water level so high in mine, this could be what's happening in yours, and I've got a really fast fill through the inlet valve here. This means that sometimes when it's flushed, the air gap doesn't break in the siphon. So therefore, it carries on flushing through. The water's filling up faster than it can reach the air gap to break the siphon. When that happens, you will get this kind of running on of the flush full pelt. Now this has nothing to do with the other problem you can get when you just get water running in the back of the pan. That is a different problem altogether. That just happens all the time, slowly. And that is usually because you have a problem with either A, the ball cock, the valve there, is letting by slowly and going down the overflow here. Or the siphon itself has got a problem. It's not seated in the housing properly. Now, this one is a McD siphon. I do have another video, completely an older one, on the Jaberets. They have a different thing altogether where you've got two buttons on the top of the system. This one is for the remote button one, like I've got here. And they use here MACD. Now what I'm going to do, because I'm, this has been happening a couple of times, I've caught me out. <laughs> I'm going to fit a little valve on the top of here, a little isolation valve. I don't really like them, but they're, they're very small and they do fit in. So I'm going to show you how to get one squeezed in there. So if we can slow that flow rate down, then we'll find that um, because it's going in slower than it's flushing, uh, you won't get that running on like it's been doing. So I'm going to fit this little isolation valve I've got here and it's going to go in here. I'm going to do that because it's nice and flexible. I should be able to squeeze this in there quite easily. Now then make sure that your valve arrow is the right way round. You don't want to get it wrong. I'm going to make this bit up with this bit of copper in the end here already so it's ready to go in and just screw the flexi straight on this end. I'll show you what I mean. Here's a Fit in, put that on there. An olive, call them olives, nice woman. <laughs> and fit it in there, in the outlet end. And do it up. Now I'll just tighten that piece of copper in the end of there, tighten up the spanner. I'm going to put that bit on there and the olive on here. And there it is ready. Okay, we'll just connect the cistern end. Now I've turned the water off obviously at the mains. So I'm going to flush that now into the system, it won't fill, put this off. It's safe now to undo this nut here. Now when you undo this one, this nut here with a spanner, it's best to hold the valve with the other hand. Now as I'm holding my hand with the right hand, I've already done that, so it's already kind of cracked as it were. I'm ready for me to undo this. So far, we can do it with our hand. There it is, disconnected. Now I'm going to disconnect it off the end of there. And now I'm going to screw this on the end of the flexi, like so. There we have it now, ready on the end of our flexi. I've tightened it up, didn't need to show you that. Just hold against and nip it up with the spanner on that nut there. Okay. And now we're going to place our fitting on like so and do that one up. 
Okay, I've done this one up in place. Again, because I haven't got a lot of room, so I've held against and done it up. I know the angle I want it. So we've got a washer here. Don't forget to put this on the end of the swivel connector. It goes on there. Okay, before you do it up onto the ball cock. Don't forget, it's a very important piece, or you will have a leak. Lastly, just make sure you don't cross thread this one. Okay, when you do on the plastic valves, very easy to do. And I'm shining one hand, doing it one hand holding the camera, because I've got my sensors, but normally you'd hold the valve with the other hand, stop it twisting and turning. Now we can regulate our pressure now. I mean, before, it was pretty fast, so fast, obviously, that now and again, I was getting cool out, and obviously it was keeping on running due to the fact that the air gap wasn't being broken well now if i'm running in slower because the flow is restricted by this valve i can get around that problem and just run it in a lot slower so that's one way of sorting this problem out now if you've done all that and you've got a valve anyway further down you was able to close it off instead of having to fit one that was just a little extra i put on there um then we've got to see if we can get the siphon out of here and it's it's not too bad there's a little hidden clip down the back of it there. Um, I can only really show you when I've got it out and I can show you exactly where it is then. Other little problems you can get with these siphons is they can still run in slowly but sometimes due to a swarf or a bad washer inside the siphon. This is a McD which do split. There is a little pin it's down this side at the front. Now I can't get to probably show you here. I don't think you'll be able to see it but it's down the front there. I'm going to see if I can get my finger in and get it out so you can see, because you'll easily see it then once it's out of the system. Turn the water off first, of course, as I can now via my little valve. Boop. There we go. <laughs> and flush the system. Okay. So, these are usually a left hand twist. I've got a little lever down there. I'll just give it a left hand twist and it should pop out like so. You really need to go down the system. Once it's out, you can see all that it's about, and mainly it's to do with this washer here. And that is the, what can go wrong. Uh, it can split, it can have warps and dents in it. Um, so I'll pop it out there so you can see it properly, and obviously, you can get replacements anywhere for that washer. Don't be tempted to turn it around, just put a new one on. Now also, at the bottom of the system there, there's the housing that it sits into. Do make sure there's no swarf or anything over that housing. Okay, and it's pretty, pretty routine really. Just check, you can run your finger around it if you're not sure. But as I say, the main other thing that can go wrong is this, this siphon thing here with the washer on it. So, Having checked that, oh, well, of course, uh, one other thing, if you do have one of these and it still doesn't go, you could always get another siphon and just renew this middle part here. I'm not sure whether you can get just the internals, but if not, just get the whole thing and just change the actual working bit. Leave the whole rest of it still there, which is handy, isn't it? And before we go any further, I'll just show you that little button there. And it is there. See the little arrow on it there showing which way to twist it in. So we're going to put that in back in now. So you should fill it slot in the slot and fill it drop in. Once it does, we can just twist it in place. There it is, fill it go. Okay, and just give it a little twist in place of the arrow, which it said, which is there. And you can fill it, it's locked in, you can't pull it up. Just try pulling it if you can't, you know it's in place. So, last type of siphon is this one, rather old fashioned now, they're getting on a little bit. These are in the older type of toilets with a handle attached to this, and you flush it like so. When you do this, it goes up and down inside, this part is the moving part of it. Uh, quite often the washer splits and that's when they won't flush very well, uh, and usually that's the reason. So, very cheap to fix them, but awkward if you've got to take it right out of a close couple system and you've got to take it from the pan. Now, what can go wrong with these that water runs into the pan? Well, quite simply, when it's sitting in the site in the cistern, there's where it sits like so. This part here, 
obviously is in the water up to the line there, we'll say that's the water line. Well this part, if there's a crack in here at all, a split or anything, it will start to trickle water down the inside of that into the pan. So it's just a very small thing that can happen with these, but it usually happens on the seam. You see the seam here? That's the weakness, and that's the part. If you get a little split, it will start to run. But that's the only thing that usually generally goes wrong with these. These are a hell of a job to fit, as I say, if you've got a close couple pan. Um, I've got one of these that I've done. That I've got a video on how to change this over. So I'll give you a link for that if you want to change the whole thing over from a close couple. It's a bit of a job, but it is doable. Okay. Other than that though, that's the main types covered. There are a few other types out there, a bit more strange, but uh, in the main, the three that I've covered there are the ones, these, that McD, McDuff, I call them McDuffs, <laughs> uh, and the Jared Berets, uh, they're the other ones, so I showed you a video on that one uh, a few years back, so you've got a link for that one as well. Okay, I hope that's all covered it now for you. Catch you next time on next time's video. Bye-bye. For our video, Stereoton33, thanks for watching.